Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, and this is episode, god I don't even know, of my Let's Play of Bayonetta, so let's jump right in. Hmm, this seems awfully familiar. I'm sure this won't provoke any traumatic memories. Horrible things that happened in the Middle Ages. John? Cereza? The little one? Anyone who's ever gone wading at the beach knows exactly what that feels like. Tentacles? Why did it have to be tentacles? Just a casual Indiana Jones reference with no explanation whatsoever. So, I... I mean, once again, this is an example of the strangely sadistic tendency to just drop you into a fight and have you immediately dodge or take a bunch of damage. At this point I've gotten to the stage where I'm just instinctively dodging at the end of every cutscene regardless. Which is an interesting way to be. This game kind of just provokes an utter paranoia in the player I think. Which, uh, maybe we deserve that, I don't know. It's also oddly consistent that it always seems to be three joys. It's never a different number. But we've fought them tons of times at this point, so there's not a, not a huge amount of stuff to say. Um, I am very amused by the fact that my... Um, having played through this once already now, having successfully completed it once, um, a lot of stuff in this makes sense in a way it didn't before, but I have to say it honestly just reminds me that my own interpretation of events, what I figured had happened at the end of the game, are much more strongly supported by the narrative in the game than what the uh, developers have said is the official actual sequence of events. This is kind of bizarre but quite amusing if you ask me. Also, as far as I can tell it's impossible to drop on these guys which is a huge shame. I would just love to fall like a just fall like a meteor out of the sky and completely destroy these things. I think that would be quite funny. So, this chapter is fairly short, I think. Um, there's just a few areas with this really nice skybox. You um, drop out of the sky into, again, what seems like it should be a puzzle but isn't. Uh, it's quite simply, there are four things activate the four things and then you get to go do the next stage of the mission. I think there is one actual puzzle in this uh, entire chapter and it might be the only puzzle in the entire game so I'll bring that up when it happens but um, yeah for this part it's just you know press the buttons do the thing. But yeah so I will hopefully talk about this much later on when it's a little bit more fitting based on what's actually happening, but it's just... At this point in the narrative, I wasn't really sure what was going on. 
at the end of the game I was like, okay, I guess if this and this and this, then that makes sense, and therefore what happened was this. And then I was looking it up out of curiosity, and it's just like, no, the director says, actually, what happened was something completely different and less intuitive that's not explained in the game at all. It's actually this other whole different situation, which anyone could guess, apparently. So a bit later on, we're going to meet the upgraded versions of these, which, as I mentioned before, are my least favorite enemy in the entire game, for reasons that will become very clear when I fight them. In fact, I might actually make a break from my usual um, tradition and record uh, fight audio for that after I beat them instead of Jurin, simply because they're that irritating to fight. But that won't be for a little bit longer. Um, before we do anything else, I just want to point out that this is another really nice skybox, and honestly, I like this a lot more than the previous chapter. Um... It feels a lot more cosmic. It doesn't have that sort of horrible, crusty, piss-yellow filter over everything, which is not a phrase I wanted to have to say. Uh, even the feathers look nicer. And uh, yeah, as I went on about before, I am just a nice admirer of... I am, admi I am an admirer of nice skyboxes. I think there's just... Yeah, I think this is the only chest in the game with a red hot shot in it, so... Uh... I guess I don't need to have been as obsessive about collecting those as I have been, but anyway, so it's time to show off just what incredible thigh strength Bayonetta has as we rotate, what is this, an entire plaza just through the sheer thigh grip of uh, one gyrating pole dancer. So yeah, this is one of the few puzzles in the game, which is that just that if you rotate this to the right instead of the left, you get uh, a chest and the first Alpine portal. But it's, again, that's not really a puzzle, that's just something you have to notice is an option. Um, there's not really any deduction that goes into it. Anyway, I'll be handing off to future me. Thanks, past me. Uh, you've decided to give me a really difficult challenge here because essentially this is a bonus uh, combat challenge that is identical to one we have done a couple times already. There's not really much more for me to say about the combat challenge itself, so I'll try and ramble a little bit about the angel design. Um, I mean, of course, this is one of the combat challenges where you just need to use Wicked Weaves, so I'm essentially just spamming the uh, punch-kick-punch-shiraba combo over and over and over for this entire map. It's slow and irritating, but it's honestly the easiest and kind of most effective way to do this. Um, but yeah, so one thing I can't remember if I've pointed out, but that I didn't notice for a really long time, is that Angel's faces are not their faces, or at the very least, these uh, applauds. Their faces are not their faces. What looks like a face with a bird-like beak and stuff is actually kind of an extended neck. And occasionally, you can see it just there, occasionally you get these little glimpses of their actual heads, which are sticking out of the tops of their necks, looking upwards. So even though the um, angel designs a lot of the angel designs are kind of basic and uninteresting. In a lot of their details, uh, they are weirder than they appear. So, of course, we have the strange pulsating, meaty underlayer beneath their alabaster stone exoskeletons. But we also have these strange protuberances. These um, weird heads poking up vertically, looking upwards perhaps uh, gazing upwards at the glory of God or something? I don't know. There's there's lots of like odd explanations in those sort of dogmatic ways for why things are the way they are. But um, maybe they just decided it looks weird. But uh, yeah, it's quite hard to spot that, so for the most part it doesn't rehabilitate them from just being very ordinary looking birdmen for the purposes of uh, visual design. But um, yeah, uh, everything has these little flourishes. Even the Beloveds, which are basically just giant ogres, have these um, weird second mouths hanging below their alabaster faces. Alabaster's a really good word. Um, oh god, how much more of this is there? Uh, yeah, so this is probably the most boring challenge of the... of a few levels. There's not, like... 
Honestly, I was bored performing this challenge. Uh, even the other challenge in this level is a bit more fun. But, um, it's, yeah, it's just simply a matter of sitting and spamming. And trying not to accidentally hit them, since that will cancel you out of your combo. I don't think it does you damage, but it does stagger you a little bit, which of course leaves you open to them attacking you. So, time to hand it back to future me, who hopefully will not make me do anything like this again. Uh... And we're back. So, I'm sure that uh, Future Me had a lot of interesting th stuff to say about that thrilling battle with all those interesting variations and lots of um, fascinating little oddities and, oh wow, it was a real surprise when that other thing happened, remember? And, you know, the remarkable, the switch around, the drama, the highs, the lows. Um, anyway, so yeah, having done that you literally just have to go back spin it the other way. Um, there's a lot of make work in this game, really. Every single time she does this, it makes me want to learn to pole dance, I'm not going to lie. Actually, now that I think about it, um, all of the end of level uh, trophy award audio pieces are, in fact... Um, clips from parts of the game. They're things that those characters say in various scenes. And if you score a platinum, which I don't believe I have done on screen yet, uh, Bayonetta's line that she says is, I should have been a pole dancer. So it's just a neat little, neat little thing, I guess. It's vaguely amusing. Nice to see Humphrey the Chainsaw again, the only demonic weapon in the game. Somehow that's more extreme than most of the other torture attacks. I'm not really sure what's up with that. I also like that I've managed to finally collect enough magic pearls that I actually can uh, have enough mana to do two different um, torture attacks in a row now. I've actually, If I fill up both bars, I can actually do just one and then another one. Which is more useful against things other than these. So, I missed a crow that was running around here, but I'm not gathering them anyway, so that doesn't really matter. Remember, be a good house guest and smash all of your owner's pots. That is just one of the fundamental rules of video games. Always um, smash any stoneware that you can find, just in case it has some kind of valuable resource in it. Anyway, this guy might look kind of familiar. I'm not really sure what he's doing back. Um, I don't know who gave him permission. Uh, in fact, it's never explained why these guys are back. I... Personally, I find myself wondering... Well, my, my initial thought was that, like, oh, okay, so they're, you know, spiritual emanations in the, in the real world were, you know, just lesser reflections of their true forms and you know, they reform back in heaven after they're destroyed in the real world. But how does that factor into the fact that they literally get sucked down to hell and eaten? So I don't know if these are supposed to be illusions or constructs formed by, you know, the other angels just to make, make up for the fact that their powerful warriors have been removed. But honestly, it doesn't make a ton of sense that um, both of the bosses we fought previously come back at this stage, since they were very definitely... They were afraid of getting sucked down to hell and then after they got sucked down to hell, it seemed like that was kind of final. Additionally, their gold filigree is faded, and instead of uh, instead of being covered in shiny gold, they are covered in this sort of grim verdigris colour. So, yeah, I... I don't know what's up with that. I don't think it's ever explained in any, like, developer commentary or anything, but um, if it is, and you happen to know, do let me know, because I'm really curious if there's a narrative reason for why these guys come back. I mean, I'm not objecting because they are fun to fight, um, especially now that I'm more powerful than I can do, you know, just kick a million rockets into his face simultaneously, you know, as you do. Like, we all had that one friend who takes it too far, you know? Uh, you're out at night and they get into a fight in the bar and, you know, then they've got rocket shoes and, you know, 
they're hitting the bouncer with rocket shoes, they're firing rockets, you know, explosions everywhere, it's a disaster, it's awful. Um, generally speaking, I would recommend not hanging around with those people. So yeah, in case you're wondering, that is in fact the first hint we're seeing of what will be the next boss. Um, it is one of the weirder designs in the game, which I appreciate. As I have made clear, I like the weird designs, I'm less interested in the boring designs. You know, an unusual opinion that many people do not share, I'm sure. This fight's actually completely skippable, but um, as I've said before, if you skip a fight, you don't get any points. And what do points mean? Points mean prizes. So, I hope you don't get motion sickness. It, oh! Was there a chapter I was going to... Oh, wait, no, that's not... <laughs> that's happening later. Um, I hope you enjoyed that teaser preview of something that might be happening later on. Anyway, I hope you don't have motion sickness. Because uh, if you do, you probably just threw up on your desk. Actually, do people watch this at their desks? Or is this more of a sit at your computer while you're doing some work kind of a situation? Anyway, this is the first time we have fought three kinships at the same time. And they are just as easy to fight as before with... They have all the same problems. And... Yep. So... Did that guy whip? That's not allowed! I've never seen them do that. I, I've never seen one do that before. I did not know that they were allowed to wiggle out from underneath you. That seems extremely unfair when they are supposed to be the only platform you have available to stand on while fighting them. Really, they ought to just fight fair, frankly. But it is nice to have another look at them. They're not a very common enemy. I think there's only one, maybe, more instance of fighting them in the entire game. There might be none. So it is nice to get another look at their just weird musculature and... The fact that they leave corpses. They even leave corpses here in heaven. Actually, we've only fought them in heaven. But none of the other angels do that. They just get destroyed completely. So not only do you almost never fight them, you don't really get to appreciate them in their full glory. But that does make me wonder... Oh, also, this is a neat trick. So, do you remember in the previous chapter where there was uh, just a panel floating off by itself with a chest on it? Yeah, they did that again, except this time they did not have a nice, convenient little uh, environmental clue to let you know it's over there. You just have to hope, really. You just have to be lucky and notice. It is visible from over there before the spinning church, so if you get lucky you'll spot it from there, but there's no real actual hint. There's no direct way of noticing. Anyway, I was talking about angels, so uh, what I'm wondering is, is there a difference between what happens to the angels you smash to bits and they just die from blunt force trauma, and what happens to the angels you actually suck down to hell with your actual demon hell powers? And, <laughs> yeah. When I was here before, I thought, oh, I know this trick, I know what's going to happen, but no, these are just completely empty. So there's really no way to know whether a statue is um, going to explode and attack you or if it's just a thing. There's also a neat trick here. If you hug the right hand side, uh, it's very difficult for these to hit you. So you don't actually need to dodge any of them. If you just stick to the right hand side, you can just zoom straight through. But yeah, I mean, even Dark Souls at least had a visual hint to tell you which treasure chests were mimics, but in this, no, it's just some stuff will attack you and some stuff won't. So I'm going to about, about to go into the most difficult combat in this chapter, so I'm going to stop talking now, even though this isn't a Alfheim portal, and hand off to future me. So the real trick to these guys is to just go absolutely sick house from second one. They are really, really difficult to fight for a couple of reasons that I will talk about in a second. But what I have discovered is that the way to get past this combat encounter is to, uh, as they spawn in, immediately corner one. And if you start a combo before they are able to finish their spawning animation, you can trap them in that combo long enough that you get their health down far enough that you can probably get a torture attack to kill one of them, or almost kill one. Um, so if you manage to ab abuse the camera to lock the other one out of being able to fight you immediately, then um, finish spamming that combo and then torture attack, then you can wipe one out quickly, which lets you take the other one out more easily. Uh, the reason why these guys are a huge pain to fight is because, as far as I can tell, witch time does not work against them, and they are just as fast, just as deadly, just as able to dodge out of your combos and cancel your combos 
um, and trap you in their combos as are the uh, unupgraded versions of them. So for all I've been talking about how frustrating the unupgraded versions are to fight all throughout this game, these guys are like identical, except also you don't have the advantage of um, wailing on them during witch time. So yeah, they are pretty tough. But if you do go, you know, sicko mode really quickly and um, just blast them down, then it is a lot easier. And that's all for them. In case you've been wondering what's been happening to these guys, it's this, apparently. What happened to Mummy? Well, you see, she just went to look for something, that's all. I can't believe that witch, placing a poor helpless child under her spell. If she did anything to this little girl's parents, I swear. Okay, buddy. <laughs> Have you ever seen a child just absolutely beef it? Mommy. No, no, no need to cry. We'll get you to your mom in no time. Just a child completely untriumphantly face planting. Uh, here, I've got some candy if you want. Isn't that the same like combat enhancing damage boost candy that Bayonetta's always eating? Is that why she's like this? Did someone give her combat drugs as a child? What is this? It's yummy. I don't know. It's candy. Strawberry, I think? Hey, Kitty, I've got some yummies. Would you like some? Is that cat your friend? Yes, he is. His name is Cheshire. He's cute, isn't he? Cheshire. What a stupid name. Well, so much for taking the highway. That just means we're gonna have to find something else. It does make sense that Baby Bayonetta wouldn't know what candy is, since she literally predates the presence of sugar in Europe. Now, all I have to figure out is what to do about you. So, Cerecita, that woman's really your mom? Uh-huh. My mummy is strong, and she protects me from scary monsters. Monsters? <laughs> I don't think you know who the real monsters are. So yeah, it's completely unclear to me whether that's happening in Paradiso, and these guys fell into Paradiso as well, which is what it looked like at the end of uh, the highway chapter, but um, there's no real clear indication one way or the other. It had that gold filter, but then a lot of places in this game have had a weird sort of visual filter. So yeah, there's one more Prince of Persia hallway here to get through. Actually, I should... Hmm, a future project. I might do this for the uh, the old Prince of Persia games, because they were genuinely really, really good. The uh, PlayStation 1 Prince of Persia trilogy. Absolutely perfect. Huh, can I drop down there? Anyway, I found this hugely irritating. I played this chapter a couple times. Before I found this, I ended up having to look up where it was. But... Um, there's no real hint that this wall is smashable. But if you do smash it, you come over here for a bonus combat, which is uh, completely missable if you're not careful. And can you guess what it's going to be? Yeah, it's going to be two more of these bastards. So uh, time to hand off again to future me. I did actually forget before that I would um, have to fight these guys here. I remember there was a combat encounter here. I didn't remember. I don't think I remembered that it was two more of these incredibly frustrating guys. But uh, I managed to display the principle I talked about in the previous encounter a little bit more clearly here. Uh, I didn't manage to pull it off in the previous encounter. I did, in fact, uh, not, you know, trap them in and wail on them to wipe one out before the other gets to do anything. Here, I get a little bit closer to matching that ideal, although I don't quite manage to stick the landing and finish him off. As you can see, though, uh, one more hit in any of those combos would have taken care of him in the initial salvo which would have left me in a slightly better position to fight this one. I think they might move slightly faster than the other versions of them, however, uh, I'm not actually sure. So I do actually use a safety item here, just because uh, uh, I didn't want to uh, end up using a red hot shot and take a death. But um, fortunately the rest of the combats in this chapter, the one remaining combat, is 
It can be kind of frustrating, but it's a lot easier than fighting these guys. Uh, I suppose which time becomes kind of a crutch and enemies like this are supposed to shake you out of um, relying on it too much, but honestly it feels like such an integral part of the combat that it's odd they remove it. And that's all for them again. So when I said the last one was the hardest, uh, this one's actually slightly tougher for assorted reasons that I hope I just talked about. But um, yeah, I completely forgot that I would have to fight these two. I came over here for the chest. So that's a stroke of luck that I didn't accidentally miss a uh, bonus combat. Anyway, unrelatedly, uh, I guess, well, relatedly, the end of the level's just over there, so I'm going to go to the shop real quick. Uh, not for anything in particular, I just want to grab some upgrades. Take care of my babies, will you? Some people may have a thing for the 45. I think we have seen all of these now, but he seems to say that one more than the others. I'm not sure why. So I could buy an item of various sorts, but instead I'm just going to completely uh, buy out the rest of the health upgrades. I can afford to get, I think, all of the remaining health upgrades here, so I might as well. At the very least, it'll make it less likely that I have to use a red hot shot. So, uh, yep, so that's all of them, I think. I might as well spend a little bit more on another moon pearl as well. But yeah, so that means that all of the remaining health upgrades in the game are from environmentally, you know, obtained uh, power-ups. So whatever other money I have, I can spend on whatever I like. Anyway, it's time for this chapter's first section of backtracking. I think it's the only section of backtracking. If you time that right, you can sprint all the way along without getting hit once, but I'm an idiot. So hopefully the same is true here. Nope, I got hit. Okay. Regardless, uh... Oh, hey, that's interesting. So, you know, you remember how I bought the breakdance move and then said I will never remember to use this and then proceeded to never again use it? It's especially amusing when you combine it with the uh, rocket launchers. Anyway, time to dive into the final combat challenge. So I'll hand off to future me. Thanks, past me. I blitzed through this one pretty quickly, so I won't have much time to talk about what I want to talk about, which is to just briefly give an overview of what these angel weapons actually are. So I've mentioned before that the main way you get angel weapons is occasionally they drop from killing angels, but uh, you're guaranteed to drop if you get a torture attack, I think. So by far the most useful of these, in my opinion, is the polearm here, which is dropped by ba or any of the basic applauds, because um, when you activate the heavy attack, instead of doing a, a single melee attack, you do this spin attack, which will hit everything nearby you um, very quickly for a lot of times. This is really useful because angel weapons in general generate a lot more uh, combo points and boost your combo multiplier much faster than uh, your own weapons. So ordinarily they only last for two or three hits, so that won't get you a huge increase to your combo meter. However, the um, pull arm, because you do that uh, striptease spin attack, will essentially generate a huge amount of points very quickly because you're hitting them over and over and over and um, you're hitting a whole bunch of them at once. Uh, there's some details to the other angel weapons that I would like to talk about, but as you can see I just completely blasted through this challenge almost instantaneously. So uh, I hope I'll remember to talk about this stuff some other time. And we're back. Nice to see a perfect platinum, but these, as I am sure I just said, are some of the easiest combat challenges in the game. Huh, so that's actually what, like, six health upgrades I've got on this chapter, considering all the ones I just bought. One thing I have been wondering about the kind of, like, uh, I guess existential logistics- oh, come on. So yeah, if you screw up the timing on that, you do just beef it completely and get destroyed, but, um, uh, yeah, the existential logistics of heaven and stuff. I I have been wondering if hell is primarily made out of remixed segments of um, the human world. These things were referred to as being reflections of one another. Does that mean that um, Earth is essentially the core reality and the others are like fractioned versions of it? Because heaven seems to have a lot less consistency, a lot less sense to its kind of overall design. 
So, as far as I can tell, these aren't real angels, but they're also not really, um, what do you call them, illusions. Uh, the fact that they explode into water seems to imply that <laughs> they are the water, so... In fact, when I smash this one as well, you will see the water level goes up again, and when I smash the third one, the water level will go up a third time. So this is literally the only time in the game this happens. Um, I don't know if these, like, horrible... I mean, I know I keep making piss jokes, but they are... it's yellow water. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of fetishes in this game. There's the whole dominatrix thing, there's the tentacles. Uh, there's a lot of yellow water. Not to yuck anyone's yum, but, you know. Anyway. I do find myself wondering, is this supposed to be representative of the of the boss that we're going to fight in the next chapter? So, there are four bosses, and it would make sense for something so inspired by, like, medieval Christian folklore to have some kind of elemental uh, conception. Not just because it's a fantasy game in general as well. But, um... It, I mean, the second boss very clearly has a uh, wind power set. The first boss could be argued to have a fire power set, but... Um, and this boss that we're about to fight... I mean, I would have assumed it has like an earth-related power set for reasons that will become clear. So, um, one would assume that this boss that we're about to fight next chapter has some kind of earth-related potency, but based on these uh, fluid elementals, uh, water powers maybe, who knows. But that does then call into question the fourth boss, which we fight in the ocean, so who really knows. I might be reading too much into it. It has just been pointed out to me, of course, that there is the theory of the four humours as well. Black bile, yellow bile, blood, and... What's the other one? Is it pus? Um, it's not pus, is it? Anyway, so, of course, as I'm sure you know, that is the medieval theory that there are four fluids in your body that dictate essentially how your body functions biologically. Um, which... I'm not really sure what that what that would say about the four bosses if we tried to categorize them under that rule. Um, the first boss seems like it would be blood, because blood had a sort of a hot temperament, and actually that would be directly counter to the virtue. Well, I mean they do represent the four cardinal virtues, so as far as um, those things are concerned, it's pretty obvious. But I'm pretty sure there were a lot more than four cardinal virtues, is the thing. So. Um, if they were going for a virtue-based thematic selection, that seems like not the way to go about it. So, as usual, these guys are infuriating to fight against. Um, if you get lucky, you can time a dodge against one of those upwards attacks and get some witch time to wail on them. They seem to have a lot less hit points than the previous times we fought them, but they just will not stand still and let you hit them. It's also interesting that the... Uh, the statue here of the witch and the Lumen Sage. The witch has not been destroyed. Uh, it's pointed out pretty much every time we find them in the human world that the witch statue has been, you know, shredded, torn to bits, and you have to put it back together again. So, um, it's interesting that here in the human world, that's not the case, when you might think it would be. Was the uh, genocide of the witches not, like, part of the plan of heaven? Was that just a human thing? Oh wow, I screwed that up, huh? So, this is the very end of the level. It's not difficult at all. This is the closest thing the game has to a puzzle. You have to remember that you can walk on water and then... You just put it together that you can double jump up here if you can get close enough via the water. Um, it's the only part of the game that requires any deductive reasoning whatsoever. And I guess that answers the question of whether or not they were on Earth or Heaven. I do keep saying Earth and Heaven instead of Human World and Paradiso. Uh, oh, is that a Platinum? It's probably not. I think the Silver's brought me down. Yeah, it's just gold. I took way too long in that final fight. Oh well. There's always next time. So, there's just the minigame and then that's going to be all from me for today. Ready, 
I will refresh my knowledge of the uh, four humors and see if I can come up with some kind of extremely spurious typing to uh, compare the four, four main bosses of the game. Although, what would Jean be under that? Obviously, she's exempt from the whole uh, thematic typing, so she's not part of the same organization. But, um, yeah. Bonus points to anyone who guesses how many... Wait, no, I did that joke already. So, completely ignore what I was about to say, I guess. Uh, I've got plenty of red hot shots, and as I said before, at this point, I'm not sure that using them is actually better than just getting a continue, so I'm going to invest everything in healing items instead. But yeah, um, on my personal playthrough of this game, I had by this point completely decided, yeah, Cereza is just definitely time-displaced baby Bayonetta. So, um, no spoilers on anything I've said, it should be obvious by this point. And that is going to be all from me for today. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and there's links to my other projects in the description. Thank you so much for watching.